Good morning, um, members. Uh, my name is uh, Neil Goff. I'm the uh, deputy leader of South County District Council. Um, good morning, uh, members, officers, and any members of the public who are attending this meeting in person, attending remotely, or viewing the webcast. Welcome to this meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council Cabinet. May I make some first some housekeeping announcements, including important safety information for those present in the room. If attending the meeting in person, we ask that wherever possible you wear a face covering at all times. Please also keep to the one-way system in the chamber and please use the hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes provided. Whether present in the chamber or virtually, please make sure that you do not switch your microphones on unless you are invited to speak. Those who are participating virtually should, if possible, use a headset microphone. All participants should speak slowly, slowly and clearly. Please ensure that you do not, that you have switched off or silenced any other devices that you have so that you do not interrupt the proceeding. I will do now. Um, the normal procedure at Cabinet is to take votes by affirmation, and we will continue with this tradition. When we move to a vote on any item, I will ask if members agree with the proposal. If any member wants to either vote against a proposal or to abstain, then a roll call will be taken. I will then ask Cabinet members to speak into the microphone so that their vote is clear, both to Cabinet and to those watching on the webcast. Members should respond for against or abstain when their name is called. Only those members... Bill, is it your... Okay. Only those members present in the chamber will be able to move and second motions and vote. Members vir present virtually may speak in the debate. Please would members who are attending virtually indicate the wish to speak by use of the chat on the Teams meeting. Those present in the council chamber should indicate their wish by, to speak by raising their hand. I will ask the chief executive to keep a note of the order of speakers both virtually and in the room. Members of cabinet will be entitled to speak before non-cabinet members starting with remotely participating cabinet members. Other members who are not cabinet members will then be able to speak, starting with any attendance remotely. Cabinet members present, I will now invite each of you to introduce, introduce yourself. Can we perhaps start uh, at this end of the table, John? And I'm John Batchelor, councillor for Linton, and I'm the lead member of cabinet. Uh, good morning, uh, Councillor Peter MacDonald. I'm the Councillor for Duxford and responsible uh, Cabinet Member for Business and Support. Good morning, Brian Mills, uh, Lead Member for Environmental Environment and Services. Environmental Services and Licensing is actually what the title is. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Member for the Salt Fleet. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Timmy Hawkins, uh, member for Caldicott Ward, and the lead cabinet member for planning policy and delivery. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm John Williams. I'm the lead cabinet member for finance and staffing, and I'm member for Fendon and Paulborn Ward. Hello, I'm Bill Handley. I'm the member for the villages of Over and Willingham, and the lead member for community resilience, health and well-being. Okay, thank you. We have a number of uh, non-cabinet members present in the room as well, so Heather, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you. My name is Heather Williams and I represent Morden Food. We also have a number of uh, councillors, I think, uh, who aren't cabinet members who are present online. Um, would they like to introduce themselves? I think Claire Thornton. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, Leader, I'm Claire Daunton, and I'm one of the members for the Fenderton and Fullbourne Ward. And Jeff Harvey, please. Yes, uh, Jeff Harvey, uh, member for Borton Ward. And Richard Williams. Hi, Richard Williams, uh, member for the Wicklesford Ward. Okay, thank you. Are there any other members on the call who I have missed? 
Institute. We also have uh, officers from our senior leadership team present, uh, both in person and online. We have Liz Watts, our chief executive, uh, Rory McKenna, our monitoring officer, Peter Maddock, head of finance. Um, I think Stephen Kelly is not with us, he's unwell. Um, but we have Chris Carter from the uh, Joint Planning uh, Service as well, and Sharon Brown as well from the Joint Planning Service. Uh, plus Democratic Services support staff and a number of officers who are present for individual reports, and we will introduce them when we when we get to our application. Uh, also, Jeff Membry, I think, uh, part of the senior leadership team and the head of transformation is also on the, on the call. Okay. Uh, moving on, um, apologies for absence. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to declare the meeting court. Um, and in the apologies for absence, uh, Jonathan. Uh, thank you, Deputy Leader. We received one apology of absence from uh, Councillor Vivi Smith, Leader of the Council. Thank you. Okay, moving to um, item three, declarations of interest. Do any members have any interest to declare in relation to any item of business on this agenda? Nope, can't see any. Uh, if any interest does subsequently become apparent later in the meeting, please would you raise it at that point? Okay, so turning to uh, item number four, minutes of the previous meeting, um, members are asked to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 5th of July. I move the approval of those minutes as a correct record. Uh, is that seconded? Thank you, Mr. Councillor Batchelor. Do members agree to approve the minutes? Agreed. Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Anyone wish to abstain? No. Cabinet therefore agrees to approval of the minutes as a correct record by affirmation. Item number five on the agenda is uh, public questions, but we have no public questions which have been submitted. Item number six, issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Uh, my, my understanding is that the Scrutiny and Overview Committee um, don't have any issues relating to any of the items on this agenda. Um, that's uh, Councillor Milnes. Thank you. I'd, I'd just like to uh, thank the Scrutiny uh, Committee for its contribution uh, at the top of the meeting. And um, I can confirm that uh, the lead officer, uh, Rachel Jackson, and I are working and using their contributions uh, to the formulation of the policy that will be coming forward. And I think it's a good example of how Scrutiny can make early interventions in policy development. Thank you. Just for the benefit of the other members and members of the public, what was the, the policy you're referencing? Um, <laughs> so we had uh, a long conversation uh, about uh, street trading okay. um, and uh, consent streets. Good. Thank you very much indeed. But uh, there's nothing relating to items on the agenda today. So we will move on to uh, item number seven. Actions taken under uh, Chief Executive's delegated powers. Members, you asked to note this report. Um, this, the action uh, which was taken relates to the national lockdown business support policy uh, and the growth fund policy, which was issued on the 14th of July. Do any members have any questions or comments about the Chief Executive? Okay, so we will ask to note that. So moving on, um, we, we have uh, now the item relating to the naming of a new town at Water Beach. Um, I think uh, Councillor Handley will introduce and move the recommendation. I think we have officers on the call as well. I can see Ryan Kurtzi, uh, who is on the call. Ryan, is there anybody else of the officer core who is with you? Uh, good morning, Deputy. Uh, 
No, there's no other officers present. Uh, I believe Jeff Membry is here representing the paper, and then we've got a representative from uh, RLW Estates and uh, Urban and Civic on the call as well. Okay, thank you very much. Well, if I can now hand over to Councillor Bill Handley to introduce the report and move the recommendation. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, the naming of the new town of Waterbeach is, a, is an important milestone. Um, and the paper presented to Cabinet today is a result of a, a two-stage, 12-week public consultation by the developers. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased to see we have a representative from the, uh, of the developers here on the call today. Um, consultation booklets were sent out to over 3,000 properties in Waterbeach and, and surrounding villages. And the consultation was marketed through the developers' regular newsletters and various online media. There's also a dedicated web page which contains all of the consultation material. Despite the publicity, um, only a relatively small number of responses were received, but those that were received were both constructive and helpful. Um, the first phase of the consultation found that just over half of the people who responded preferred the name to cover both the new town and the existing village and opting for the name Waterbeach. This was further explored in phase two by a series of three workshops involving a wide demographic, including representatives of Water Beach Parish Council, uh, local county and district councillors, and other interested parties such as uh, the Water Beach Heritage Group, uh, the primary schools, and Water Beach Action for Youth. All three of these workshops supported the whole place approach uh, using the Water Beach name and um, Although, although there were some suggested alternatives, such as Water Beach North, <coughs> excuse me, Water Beach North or North Water Beach, in the end, the alternative suggestions didn't really garner much support. The conclusion of the cons consultation is that Water Beach should be the name of the new settlement, including the existing settlement. So the options for Cabinet today are laid out in paragraph 15. Um, Cabinet can note the developer's consultation report to Appendix A, uh, affirm the development's consultation process and agree with their proposal that Waterbeach should be the name of the new settlement in Waterbeach Parish, and it in, that includes the existing settlement. Obviously, the alternative is to reject the findings and suggest an alternative course of action. Um, I would like to make this proposal. We accept the paper. Thank you, Councillor Handley. Um, is that seconded, please? Um, yes, Deputy Leader, I'd like to second that based on the consultation response and the support from the Parish Council. Excellent. Are there any other Cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? Councillor Hawkins. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Deputy Leader. I think it's just to... Um, say congratulations to all those who took part in this um, in this process and I was quite struck by a paragraph in the report that said the overall conclusion was that the name Water Beach should apply to the village and the new town as a whole in order to promote a sense of integration and collective identity and I think um, that says a lot because people have obviously thought about it and felt that um, there needed to be that, not a them and us, <laughs> but a sense of we are one. We just happen to have been here, you know, those of us in the village a bit longer than those who will be in the new town. So um, I think that probably bodes well for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any non-cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? Okay. Right, so I think uh, we have no other speakers, um, so we can uh, move to uh, the vote on this item. The recommendation is set out in paragraph two of the report to note the developer's consultation report at Appendix A, affirming the developer's consultation process and agree the outcomes of the developer-led consultation, which concludes that Waterbeach should be the name of the new settlement in Waterbeach Parish and that this will be inclusive of the existing village. Uh, do members agree with the proposal? Great. Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Anyone wish to abstain? Nope. 
therefore the, the cabinet agrees the proposal by affirmation. I'd just like to thank uh, the officers and the developers who uh, participated in the consultation process for their for their work in reaching this resolution. So thank you very much indeed. Okay, um, so we now move on to item number nine. Uh, which is the consultation on the location of the, <coughs> excuse me, the wastewater treatment plant. Um, I will uh, introduce this report and move the recommendation. Um, so this uh, consultation relates to the relocation of the wastewater treatment plant from Cowley Road, the preferred uh, route as selected by uh, Anglian Water. Um, this is the second public consultation prior to the development consent order submission, which is uh, expected to be next year. Um, I think the report highlights a number of issues which are, will be particularly relevant to uh, our residents, um, focused on issues relating to traffic, landscape, and indeed even the technology and the environmental impact of that technology. So um, I would like to recommend uh, that uh, we uh, move this report and uh, submit it as our response to the consultation. Do I have a seconder, please, for that? Thank you, Councillor Cooney-Hawkins. Uh, thank you. I would like to second, uh, second this uh, recommendation as written. Are there any Cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? Councillor Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, but as, as this report um, says, that um, this is the second uh, consultation uh, prior to the uh, submission of their application to the Secretary of State. And I have to say, and as is indicated in this report, our um, disappointment at the, um, what is actually proposed to what we were promised at the um, first consultation. At the first consultation, we were promised a state-of-the-art exemplar water treatment works. And um, excuse the pun, but what we've got here is a bog-standard sewage work. Um, I'm bitterly disappointed that Anglian Water doesn't appear to have taken on board many of the um, concerns and suggestions that were uh, put forward in the first consultation. And as a result of that, as you can see, we have some serious concerns about this uh, proposed development. And I hope that Angry Water will take on board these concerns um, in their application to the Secretary of State. Um, in particular, um, the access to the site um, and that it should have a dedicated access. And also um, that it should, um, enable those working as well as vis visiting the site to be able to do so using um, active travel, um, either walk or cycle, um, where at the moment um, it, it doesn't appear they can do that. Also, how disappointing we are that um, they don't appear to be using the most up-to-date technology. Um, and if they did, then the footprint of the site would be a lot smaller and it would have a lot less impact on the landscape. So I personally am very disappointed with Angry Water. Um, I'm very disappointed that um, their consultation is more hype than, uh, than substance. And I do urge Angry Water to take on board the criticisms that we've made in this report and to demonstrate that they have listened to the local communities and they are going to deliver to us a state-of-the-art 21st century water treatment plant, which at the moment, uh, from the second consultation, um, it's not going to happen. So I, I do urge them to um, take on board our, our comments and, and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, any other members of the Cabinet like to speak on this? I can turn to uh, oh, any non-members who would like to speak. <laughs> Councillor Williams. 
Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, I'd just like to uh, stress as well that um, the comments I'm going to make are a representation for myself and Councillor Cone. As you know, he works up at Adam Brooks and is not able to attend today. Um, so going through, going through the report, um, I have to say that uh, we also were, were disappointed for some of the reasons that, that have been outlined. Um, mainly, and I'm going to comment on a few things, but the vehicle access, I mean, what you've put in this report, it, it's the only sensible option in our views. So that, that must happen. Um, and that there is strong, strong local feeling around the landscape proposals and, and what's referred to, and, and it's quite strongly opposed. So I think the, the comments you've made on here um, definitely need to be delivered strongly and robustly to, to angling water. Um, there was some concerns, if I draw members' attention to page 32, that we had around as a procedural issue. So you've got three, three options. Um, with the first option, um, to endorse the recommended approach to the consultation with authority given to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in consultation with the Deputy Leader and Leader Member of Strategic Planning to amend the draft consultation response to make reference to any additional issues that may be identified through the ongoing consultation process. That would suggest, if that was taken by Cabinet today, that a consultation response could be submitted without members or members of this council actually seeing the final version. So ahead of a decision, Deputy Leader, for this consultation to go through, given it's going to be one of the most important things that uh, is decided, should we not, as members of the council and indeed the public, get to see the response before it's submitted and, it, and it's too late, if, if that is... Um, to be the case as is suggested there and also I'm, we're making an assumption that these bullet points in, in the actual body itself there's no appendix that shows the consultation response so we're making an assumption here that this is going to be a sort of copy and paste drop so if you could um, please clarify because if so there are a few typos that would need to be addressed um, and one one final matter of clarification from cabinet would be very much appreciated from Councillor Cohn and myself and I'm sure others that there are serious concerns with the, the current proposals um, in, in Councillor Cohn and I's view this is not the right site Honey Hill is not the right site at all I'd be interested to know if cabinet have made a decision as, as to whether they agree with the site location or not but if if they don't take the concerns on board um, is Cabinet willing to pull out of the HIP agreement and pull out the project as a whole? Because it can only actually go ahead if this council is party to it. So if it's not going to be what we were told, and, and for once, I think Councillor John Williams and I are slightly aligned in our concerns. Not, not often, people will say in this council. But um, we have to be willing to, to pull out of this if it's not the right thing for our residents. Does Cabinet have that intention and will? Thank you, Deputy Leader. Okay, thank you. Um, so in, in terms of the uh, your first question, can I ask uh, Sharon to Sharon Brown to comment? I think the, the consultation response is due on the 18th of August. So uh, Sharon, could you sort of give us some guidance as to whether we could uh, possibly circulate another draft for further comment before submission or is that not possible um there are still some consultation responses to be received so we're still expecting some of the remaining consultation responses what i would say is that we have this week received the response from the quality panel this item was considered by the quality panel a few weeks ago and we now have their detailed response, which generally accords uh, with the uh, draft response that's referred to in the report. So there is the opportunity uh, for a final version to be circulated. And uh, Sharon, what, can you give uh, two questions on that? First of all, um, 
what, roughly what the timing you would anticipate for that final draft to be circulated in order to meet the 18th of August deadline, and presumably you would circulate that through email, is that correct? And then any subsequent changes to that could be uh, done in accordance with the recommendations here. That's right. So I would recommend that it would be circulated at least a week ahead of the deadline to ensure that we could respond fully uh, before the deadline and that that communication would be via email. That's all within. So do you have a further? I, I was just going to, to come back on, on that one particular issue and say, so this, this final draft, will that enable, while it be circulated, will it be enabled for members of the council to make comment on? Um, because ultimately that could result in, in another draft and potentially agreement, which would be difficult to do without in a meeting where agreement could be found there and then and going through email exchange. Um, and will it be made available to the public? So let, let me um, say that if we go through a round from the 11th of August uh, by email, it would appear to me that then comments which come in there could be incorporated into the draft. In the recommendation, there is a delegated authority to the Joint Director and the Planning and Economic Development Association with me to make any changes, and that's the process I would envisage for that. Um, in, in, you know, given the time frame here, uh, it's, we could go around in endless loops here. So we will afford one opportunity to go around again, um, and then we will deal with it by delegation. In terms of the uh, process for then um, making the final uh, version of the submitted reports available, maybe I could again ask Sharon Brown to comment on what that would be and whether they would be uh, made public and how they would be made public, if so. So yes, um, we would make the response public. Um, it isn't a statutory consultation, but given the level of public interest, we would make the response public. And, and sorry, Sharon. And how would you how would you do that? Would you how would that be made public? Um, I think we should put it on the website. That would be my recommendation. Councillor Williams. And the, the, it might help to put it with the consultation response to the phase that. phase one, so that you know, people are looking, it's in the same place, not dotted about. Thank yeah. you. Okay, good. And in terms of your, your second question, um, you know, I think we have raised here a number of um, questions associated with the plans which uh, Anglia Water currently have. Um, they went through a process of their own, which will be tested in terms of the site, the, the site selection. Um, at this stage, we are raising a number of issues, uh, which I think are you know, made uh, very clearly in this report, actually, concerns which we have and members of the public, which we, we sincerely hope that Anglia Water uh, take on board. And your, your points made about the relationship to um, the, the if bid and the, uh, uh, the importance of that, uh, hopefully will um, give weight to uh, Anglia Water making um, uh, changes and taking on board the, the points which we're making to make this uh, a scheme which is acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Councillor Daunton. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, and I speak as one of the elected members for the ward um, in which this site falls. Um, and I'm very glad to have the opportunity to speak about um, this response. Um, I share Councillor John Williams' uh, deep disappointment in many elements of it um, and the fact that it should fall short of what Anglian Wards were promising. I mean, as, as, as we all know, there was serious concern about the, the, the location, the site selection, um, and, uh, but also over the, the hopes that have been built up and not fulfilled in what Anglian Water has been offering. Um, I won't repeat what Councillor John Williams has said. As I said, I, I share um, his views, but I would also draw attention um, 
to the importance of the falling short on biodiversity, the 10%, and also falling short on taking um, the opportunities to use the latest technology um, in the development of, of a new water treatment plant and, and the opportunity that offers to use um, the very best technology um, in uh, water recycling and, and all the other aspects that um, Anglian Water could use. Um, also, I think that they have made uh, commitments which, um, in, in the initial stages, they made commitments which they don't seem to be um, following, which they don't seem to be able to, to fulfill. Um, and I think this report, this um, response, um, highlights that. And I think that's a really important element of the response, that we really do need Anglian Water to, to fulfill the promises that they made. Um, and finally, um, very important to the local community is the whole issue of access um, and the option three, the dedicated uh, route into the site. Is, it, it, the choice of a dedicated route is, is really important for, um, for the villages most affected in, in my ward. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other? Okay. Sorry, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you very much. I'd just like to um, clarify one point. Um, the Cambridgeshire Quality Panel made their report on the 14th. This report, it says, incorporated the informal feedback. Um, could I just check that uh, their official report didn't add any further substantive um, items? Yeah, can I ask... Uh, Sharon, whether you would, Sharon Brown, whether you'd respond to that, please. Yes, yeah, so there were no further substantive points that were raised by the quality panel beyond the um, key points that are set out in this report. Uh, the quality panel did make a suggestion that Anglian Water should have considered consulting on three landscape options, setting out pros and cons. So that's one of their suggestions. Um, they also focused very much on um, new technologies, which they said should have been considered. So obviously that's in line with the report and also were disappointed um, in relation to the biodiversity net gain issues in particular, uh, feeling that that illustrated a lack of ambition. So generally, very much in accordance with the report but just that suggestion about consulting on landscape options instead. Thank you. So, sorry, are we taking that on board then? The landscape options, which are currently in the I, I think there was reference, wasn't there, in the report to the fact that there was only a single landscape solution which was provided. Um, we'll, we'll take your comment as to, I didn't see a reference to the fact that there should be three in the conversation consultation response, but maybe we could include that in the subsequent draft, which we will then circulate. <laughs> um, so uh, th thank you, members, for that. I, I just make a comment that you know, what we've heard, I think, is a sort of universal kind of support here for a re robust response to what is a really quite disappointing um, proposal. So um, I'm, I'm sure officers will will take that on board, but the, uh, the feeling of the of the members here and the need to hold Anglia Water accountable to uh, the promises which they uh, have have made and where we feel that they are falling falling short. Um, I think the, the report, though, clearly does come across as being very critical, and um, we will uh, sort of hopefully have some impact in terms of uh, shaping their thoughts as they go forward. So um, let's now move to uh, the vote. The recommendation is set out in paragraph six of the report uh, to endorse the approach set out in this report and give authority to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in consultation with the Deputy Leader and Lead Cabinet Member for Strategic Planning and Transport and the Lead Cabinet Member for Transportation, Transformation and Projects, otherwise known as me, uh, to, to amend the draft 
response to make reference to any additional issues that may be identified from the ongoing consultation process and to submit a response on behalf of the Council, recognising, as Councillor Williams has suggested, that we will have one more cycle through members for this report. Do members agree with the proposal? Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Does anyone wish to abstain? Therefore, council, Cabinet agrees uh, the proposals by affirmation. And thank you again uh, to Sharon Brown and her team for work on this. And um, uh, I hope um, that we will be able to incorporate the additional comments from Councillor Batchelor in the response and get further input from members in the process. So thank you very much indeed. Okay. Um, so we now move on to item number 10, which is uh, another critical, important piece of infrastructure uh, in our area, which is uh, Cambridge South Railway Station and the response to, to uh, the consultation on that. I will introduce the report and move the recommendation um, to endorse the response um, in this report. Uh, this is a statutory response to a consultation by Network Rail, in this case, for planning consent to the Secretary of State for transportation. Um, and the, again, as in the previous item which we referred to, this report um, picks up on a number of issues of concern which have been uh, raised and are represented in the consultation. Do I have a seconder, please, for this report? Councillor Jimmy Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Deputy Leader. I second this um, um, this motion um, to adopt the response in the report. Uh, but in doing that, if I may say um, a quick word, I am uh, concerned about the proposal contained um, or that network will have made uh, regarding the biodiversity net gain and their way of um, achieving that, which seems to be uh, uh, either off-site or working with third parties on their site. And I think this needs to be looked at properly again. So I don't see how they can leave that in the hands of third parties. The other issue that I'm concerned about is the um, how passengers will get from the station, say, to Edinburgh, for example, in terms of cycleways and footpaths. Um, that doesn't seem to be included in this. I, I, I might have missed it, but I think we ought to strengthen that as much as we can, because there will be those who will be using it uh, to reach to, to, um, to get to Edinburgh. So thank you. Thank you. Um, this is, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that any any other, uh, John, John, Councillor John Williams. Thank, thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, yes, I'm picking up on the points that um, Councillor Hawkins has made. Um, I too am disappointed uh, with the biodiversity net gain. And I think it's, we must point out to Network Rail that, you know, Cambridge South is part of, part of the um, Oxcam arc. And that, and that or, and the, and the ambition of that is to have at least a 20% uh, biodiversity net gain. So I would expect Network Rail to conform to that, and I look forward to them um, amending their proposal to deliver what um, we are expecting of the Oxcam arc, um, as Cambridge South Station is part of that Oxcam arc. Also, picking up on the the point that Councillor Hawkins made about uh, travel um, to and from the station. Uh, the station is on the very western um, boundary of the Biomed campus. Um, it is some 15 minute walk from the station to Addenbrook Hospital, which is on the opposite side of the Biomed campus. And again, I'm disappointed that Network Rail offer no um, proposals to support the development of a sustainable uh, public transport and active uh, travel uh, plan to enable um, passenger train passengers uh, to access 
um, and those that work on the site to access the station um, without um, resorting to the use of, uh, of, of cars. Um, one of my great fears is that we could well see many people using uh, uh, private hire taxis um, to travel uh, between the station and some of the employment centres because there isn't an adequate public transport network or there is not an adequate um, cycle uh, provision and hope electric bikes, for example, could be provided at the station to enable that last mile um, trip to be accomplished. Um, so I am, you know, disappointed by Network Rail's um, response and plan, and I do hope they take on board the environmental issues um, that are lacking at the moment in their plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, do you have any other comments or questions? Can I, can I just, um, we've got uh, Chris Carter, who is uh, the officer involved in, in this project. Um, Chris, would you, would you like to just, uh, I know you've covered in the response the biodiversity net gain and made reference to uh, the council's 20% um, uh, ambition. I think we probably could include a reference there to the, to the Oxcam arc as well. But would you like to... Um, make a comment about the sort of active travel uh, issues and that sort of connectivity to the rest of the Anna Group site? Certainly, yes. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, it, it's probably worth setting in the context of uh, a piece of work which has just commenced with um, Addenbrooke's and the Cambridge University Hospitals Trust on a refresh of the Addenbrooke's Hospitals Master Plan. Um, that would include uh, connectivity between the proposed station and the hospital, as well as within the wider biomedical campus. So whilst it's not explicitly cited in this response to Network Rail, it is um, a matter which is on the agenda for discussion uh, with the hospital um, and partners uh, through that work. Okay. Could, it sounds like we could make reference to it in this response, though. Yes, I think we could add, add, uh, add reference to that if, if members so wish. Yeah, okay. I think that's the case. I can see nodding heads. Um, do any non-cabinet members? Councillor Williams. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, I, I only want to say that I, I do endorse, particularly on paragraph, 50, oh, sorry, paragraph page 53, um, in relation to the concerns around net biodiversity gain. And, and I think... Also, we, we want to be gaining, not just relocating. I think that's a really important thing, which and these things often do slip. So very much want to see that robustly. Um, and the language that's been used about hopeful and, you know, we hope we're taking on concerns. Can I please urge Cabinet to be strong on things like this? You know, you will, I'm sure, be listened to, but you need to be really robust, confident, and be a bit more demanding there's no there's no point just putting up a mild protest on these things if you truly believe them then you should be shouting from the rooftops if you think something's wrong you should be saying it's wrong and doing everything in your power to change it um so um some some strengthening of the resolve of cabinet on issues such as this in the previous item would be very welcome deputy leader don't underestimate our resolve i think you need to show it then deputy leader okay excellent um so I think on the on the biodiversity net gain, we've we've uh, covered that uh, in the response. I think we're going to make reference to the to, to the arc uh, ambition as well. Um, do I have any other comments from non-cabinet members? Okay, nothing. Uh, no other members. Okay. Um. So this response is due on August the second, um, which is early next week. So um, the Moving to the to the vote, the recommendation here is is to endorse the draft formal response in Appendix A, um, subject to the couple of changes which we've uh, added here, and give authority to the Joint Director for Planning and Economic Development to make minor amendments to the consultation as appropriate. So these will be drafting changes given the limited time available. Um, do members agree with that proposal? Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Anyone wish to abstain? Very good. 
again, thanks very much to the officers. And as I mentioned before on the previous item, you have our full support to be robust in your uh, interaction with Network Rail on these issues, which uh, clearly uh, they have some way to go. Okay, moving to um, item number 11, which is the Black Cat to Catlett and Gibbet uh, widening. Um, again, uh, this is a um, response to uh, consultation. I will remove, I, I will introduce uh, the report and move uh, the re recommendation on this. Uh, to Councillor Heather, Heather Williams' point, this report is probably of the three we've just reviewed, I suspect the most challenging to uh, the applicant in terms of uh, their uh, current plans relative to our expectation. But um, the, the, the key comments are um, in the report. Um, could I have a seconder, please, for that? Councillor Brian Milnes. Okay, are there any cabinet members who wish to speak on this item? Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, I think this, this particular infrastructure, yes, uh, it is welcome, but I am disappointed in the way that um, Highways England have responded and the information that they've given, or not, as the case may be. Um, and the assessments that I'm aware of also suggest that the, uh, the traffic implications would be... Uh, would have significant impact on traffic at the Durden interchange, um, which I know is not part of this project, but they did admit it would. <laughs> As everything else, we have a s serious problem um, with access to the M11 from this side of town, and it's just getting worse without any hope of solutions being provided. But, you know, get off my hobby horse, um, they've not been as um, responsive, I think, as they ought to be. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams, John Williams. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, there's a trend here, isn't there? Um, Mog Serge, Anglia Water, Network Rail, and now Highways England. Have they not read the policy of this council of being green to, the, to our core? Because in, so far, those three organisations, national uh, organisations, have ignored the policies of this council in their proposals. And I think we should be sending a message to everyone out there, including Anglian Water, Network Rail and Highways England, that we have a policy of being green to our core and we will not accept proposals which are not aligned to that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Milnes. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, um, at the stakeholder um, meeting of the A428 uh, last week, which I attended, uh, it was clear that um, a lot of the work that we would have expected to be all ready for a consultation period that starts in four weeks uh, is not yet ready. There has been no announcement of uh, the traffic modelling system, so we have no idea on what baseline um, that's going to be based. And there is a consistency of response now that Councillor Williams will be pleased to know that from both the County Council and the District Council over issues like LTN 120, which is government guidance, but which Highways England is declining to adopt. So this means there are issues of the permeability and connectivity uh, that are to be addressed. Um, and whereas we want an exemplar uh, of uh, modern design and uh, active travel, uh, alternative modal shift, uh, it's clear that Highways England are far less ambitious than we want them to be. So this report hopefully will, um, uh, this, this consultation will be robust enough uh, to pass Councillor Williams' uh, <laughs> uh, benchmarks in that regard, because I think we're all agreed that we want this to be much better than currently is before us. Thank you. Thank you. 
Councillor Mill. Do I have any other cabinet members wishing to speak? Thank you. Any non-cabinet members? Councillor Williams. Thank you, Deputy Leader. Um, and uh, yes, we've we've heard heard much on, on this one. I'm I'm simply asking that when it comes to things that the, this council is involved in, also such as the relocation of water treatment plant, we equally give it that robustness and gusto. Um, and to hear we will not accept proposals not green to the core. Let's hope that that means that when well, I didn't get the answer earlier that we will pull out of things if they don't show the correct amount of environmental benefits to our, our residents. In relation to this as well, one thing I would just like to highlight that's ultimately the mo one of the most important things, not the you know one of, it's got the environment as well, is the impact that it has to residents during any construction if this is to go ahead. We've seen that on other infrastructure projects since the, um, the A14 and things, and I really would like to, to stress that of utmost importance to Cabinet in any responses given um, on these matters, because what we see is increased traffic through villages that aren't really designed for that traffic sometimes, and we need to make sure that they're not left in a, in a worse state than, than previously. So um, I would emphasize that as important deputy leader and like i say you i look forward to hearing this uh, this enthusiasm when it's things that actually is in the control of the district council as well as things that are from outside bodies okay thank you very much uh, do i have any other non-cabinet members who would like to speak any other members no okay excellent okay so um i think we've heard with this report quite a lot of concern and uh, quite a lot of issues raised of where it's fallen short of uh, our expectations. So we, we have a recommendation here to um, submit the report, um, submit the, uh, the, the, the consultation response. I, I would sort of like to propose another part of the recommendation because in addition to the actual issues of environment and so forth. There were concerns which were expressed and they come through in the report about um, the inadequacies of the process. Um, for example, the sort of lack of baseline. So rather than sort of incorporate those within a consultation response, which will just be received as a consultation response, I would like to uh, propose another recommendation uh, in line with the uh, spirit of uh, Councillor Heather Williams on this, that we ask the, the leader um, to write to the Secretary of State for Transport, um, hopefully with the support of leaders in other affected uh, councils, uh, the county council and other district councils if possible, uh, expressing um, our, our sort of concern about the process here and the way in which the process has fallen short of our expectations. So I'd like to propose um, that we add that as a recommendation B, if that is acceptable to Cabinet. And just to say, uh, from that stakeholder me meeting, I would anticipate um, uh, support from uh, fellow councils uh, around the area that will be impacted by this, because that was their response at the stakeholder meeting. So okay. I'm very much endorse that additional step. Okay, so we will ask the leader to write in that way and see if she can get support from um, other affected uh, public bodies, if possible, above and beyond the recommendation. So on that basis, can I please uh, move the recommendation to endorse the approach set out in this report to give delegated authority to the Joint Director of Planning and Economic Development in consultation with me to review and amend the response contained within the local impact report, uh, written representations and a statement on common ground in response to further information that may be forthcoming from the scheme promoters and B uh, to write the letter to the Secretary of State. Do the members agree with that proposal? Does anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Does anyone wish to abstain? Council, cabinet therefore agrees these proposals by affirmation 
And once again to uh, officers, thank you very much indeed for your, your work um, and uh, your, your report here, which clearly uh, highlights to us uh, the deficiencies. And again, we encourage you to be as robust uh, and as forceful with Highways England to uh, get these changes in their proposal. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, we've now reached the end of our agenda. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining today's cabinet meetings. Uh, the next meeting of cabinet is scheduled to take place on Wednesday, 1st of September at 10 o'clock. But thank you very much indeed. And now we can end the live stream. <laughs>